The Hacker Sovereign, the RP-18, the first of the Hacker Sovereign transistor radios. They were produced from 1964 to 1967, and the very early models, like the one on the bench now, had a white dial face instead of the normal black. Now, this one came from... Did it come from Goldborn or did it come from eBay? I can't remember. But either way, it's it's a bit of a dirty girl. Uh, there's lots of crustiness on the top panel on the dial face. There's some chips out of the Rexine padding. And uh, it isn't padded at all. There's some dents in the front of the grill. And let's have a look round the back. Well, we do have the handle, which is always a bonus. And let's just take that off because we won't need it for repairing. It has the rear grill on there. Now, I don't know whether that's been stuck down all the way around the edge. It looks like it may have been. It does have the turntable on the bottom. And as we can see, serial number, let's put it the right way up for you, 2093. So it is quite an early one. Now let's open the back up and it opens in exactly the same way as pretty much every other hacker did. And what have we got inside? Well, we've got the old style PP9 connectors. We have an amp board and main boards in here. Now, looking at this, I can see that A, it's filled with these DALI capacitors, which are generally not very good at this age. Uh, it also has plenty of AF series transistors. Now, somebody's been in and changed one, two, two transistors here on the AM board. But the AF there is as standard. The FM tuner, I can't see that anything's been done to that. There's certainly some rather dodgy sleeving on that earth there. Looks like somebody's tried to go in with a soldering iron. And on the volume pot, I'm wondering if that volume pot is a replacement because the soldering, yeah, there's a splash of solder on the blue wire there. The insulation's melted from the green wire. This has definitely had somebody in with a soldering iron before. Let's power it up and see if she actually runs. Let's just make sure my voltage is correct. Um, let's see what the uh, radio does. Here, it looks like absolutely nothing. I am getting a current draw of around about 20 odd milliamps with the volume turned all the way up. So initially I would suspect the speaker or the amp board. So let's just get a probe lead and put this on the audio generator and see if we can generate some audio to it. We've got 10 millivolts in there. Let's put uh, 200 <coughs> millivolts of signal. So for all its faults, the amplifier board is making a noise. So we can rule that out of the chain as to what actually is faulty. Now, all I've done is, as in previous videos, if you haven't seen the uh, basic fault finding video that I did a while back, I'll put a link up to it somewhere here, I think it will be. And you'll see that this is the first test you do just to isolate where the fault is. Now, this is obviously on just the audio side. We're putting audio in to the audio amp, getting sound out. So we know that the audio board is working absolutely fine. Let's turn it up on end. Now it is on medium wave at the moment. Shall we just see if the problem is band related? Now the reason I'm just mashing these switches 
is because there may be just dirt on the switches. Now I've got a slight pop there, switching between long wave and VHF. So, so the switching seems to be working on that side of things. It's not the uh, quiet tuning. Ah, see now we got a little bit of... We did have it a second ago. We have a little bit of life there. Now, I can hear Radio 4 coming through very, very, very faintly. But that would suggest to me that the AM board may well be working. It's somewhere else that's the problem. It may not be working perfectly well, but let's have a go and see if we can get anything on medium wave. Nothing. So we're going to have to take the radio out of the case anyway. So let's do that. And we can now put the case to one side. The first thing I find after I've taken this out is a bent paper clip of all things to find in a radio near the circuit board that is the one thing you pretty well don't want to find. Now I've pre prepared myself, pre prepared myself with the radio schematic and the original book. Now this is taken from this book and if I open this up, not that one, that's the amplifier board. This one is this but obviously I'm not going to write on an original book so I used the downloaded one from the internet and it is available out there and it is free you don't have to pay for that so if you do have one of these radios you can find lots of information so what are we looking at here well apart from a very very broken resistor that's not going to do it any favors that may well be stopping it working. We have a lot of what looks like water damage corrosion on these cans. It feels like cadmium oxide. It could be aluminium oxide, but it's quite pitted if it is. We have a missing screw down here, which is actually the screw that earths these two boards to the rest of the chassis. AM board again looks okay somebody's obviously tried messing about here which is where they've changed these transistors they've had the AFs out and they've replaced them with uh, let's have a look what did they replace them with AF 127s AF 127s there and there so the first and second AM transformers are AF127s. They've left the AF117 here. They've left the whole line of 
AF 114s in. Dally caps, which are not very good. Here we have the whole radio, as you see. This capacitor, this 200 microfarad, may well be giving us problems. This one, this one, and this one will probably be doing the same. We'll see. We're getting noise on AM, so we're getting some signal through. The FM side here, well, we're not getting anything at all on FM. So let's get the signal tracer and see if we're getting anything out of the AM section. And how far back we have to go to actually get a signal. So we're not getting very much at all. Now there is another simple thing that we can try just to see if there's a dirt problem. And that is to squirt the, the switches full of switch cleaner. Now don't be shy. Switch cleaner's cheap, unless you're a deoxit user, in which case that's 30 quid there. But again, this board has holes in the back of the switches to clean them. Huh. I've worked it so much but I've pinged the long wave button off. Let's have another go with the signal tracer. Right, let's go back to the volume control just to make sure it's still not getting through. Yeah. So, if I'm not getting anything at the top end, I'm going to have to start looking at first IF on AM. Um, what I will probably do first is I will take out these two capacitors and I shall replace them and we'll go from there. Back again and here I'll just use my screwdriver as a pointer. You can see I've changed one, two, three and for the capacitor on the switchboard, we've changed four capacitors because as I went through the strip, I found that they were faulty and I was going through and I was getting a signal at the various points and in the end, we're now on medium wave and I'm on the test point. We are getting signals. We haven't gone past this point here because I measured at the test point down here. Now, I will put up a photograph that I took so that you can see the test point. It's just a little sticky up bit of wire, but that's the easiest place to measure that part of the strip at. Now, bearing in mind, we haven't done any alignment at this point. We are just testing the radio in stages to get a signal through it. Whether it's the right signal, we, we've yet to work that out. So now let's go to the other end of this AF117 and see if we're getting any signal here. Now this capacitor generally is suspect, so rather than check it there, let's see if we get anything at the volume control. The 15-inch TV, now just £89, or 
Save up to 65 pounds on selected So there we go. We are actually picking up at the volume control now. Be ready. So I can safely say that the AM side of this radio is actually fully working now. Now, seeing as I've changed pretty much every electrolytic in this section, I am going to remove that Elka mold because it, it's, it's a known issue and should I do it, should I not do it? For the sake of changing one more capacitor, I might as well do it. So I'll just change that. So what I do now is I just thought I would give you a little brief look at the system while it's working. And as you can see, there's the AF117. There's a little bit of warmth by that capacitor. I'm just trying to shield it from the light because this the camera is quite susceptible to uh, extra light and obviously with my infrared hand sort of making a difference you can see things are are not getting too hot there there is that heat reflection on the board but if we go through none of the other transistors are running too hot there's one of the af127s in the middle of the screen under the cursor there seems to be a couple of hot spots but nothing that concerned me there's uh, there's another one i get to come this side there's the first af and that is uh, uh it's it's not stone cold but it's um it's doing pretty well so we know that Everything seems to be running at a reasonable temperature. There's nothing getting untowardly hot. As you see, you know, the capacitor is just there to the left of the cursor. And the last one, again, because it's reflecting a lot of light, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit good there, but, uh, you know, not overly hot. Let's measure that. The AF is currently running at 32 degrees centigrade, so no heat at all, really. So we've actually tested all the way down the AM strip now, and we're getting music and voice and everything else at the volume control from AM. Now, that to me is a win, because with that working, I can say this entire side of the radio is at a point where we can relax about it, because... The biggest advantage with the Hacker Sovereign and quite a lot of other Hacker radios is that they're all on one board. You've got one board for AM, one board for FM. You don't have to worry about, oh, well, does this do two jobs? Does this do three jobs? Does this do more than one thing? If you're setting it up, you can look right, okay, this is the AM side, this is the FM side, and hey presto, you're doing what you're doing. So yes, we've got AM done, and I think I'm going to call that the end of this part of the video. In the next video, I shall work on the FM side, and we shall then get it fully working. And I don't know whether I'm going to do a full alignment as a separate video. We'll see how it goes. But yes, the next video will be the FM side. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again. Take care and keep an eye on the channel for the next part of the series.